start at noon with a tech outage that CNBC is calling the largest IT outage in history. It's impacting businesses, airlines, and broadcasters like us locally and around the world. Thank you for joining us. I'm China Green. Mayor Ted Wheeler declared a state of emergency over the tech outage, saying some of the city's computers and servers were affected overnight. Now, Wheeler's office did confirm with us that 911 calls were not impacted and emergency providers like Portland Fire and are continuing their services as normal. Now, the City Bureau of Technology Services is working around the clock to get affected systems back online. The outage is affecting Microsoft users globally. That includes banks, hospitals, and some internet providers. Several airlines have grounded flights, including American Airlines, Delta, and United, creating scenes of chaos like this at several airports, including PDX. This appears to be linked back to a cybersecurity company called CrowdStrike, who says a single content update caused problems with Windows. The Today Show spoke with George Kurt, the CEO of CrowdStrike, about the outage, who says the issue has been resolved. We identified this very quickly and remediated the issue. And as systems come back online, as they're rebooted, they're coming up and, and they're working. And now we are uh, working with each and every customer to make sure that we can bring them back online. And as I mentioned, all morning long, tech outages impacted airports like PDX. Lines stretched across check-in gates for hours this morning. Our Thomas Schultz has been there all morning since 4 a.m., I believe. You've been talking to people, hearing their stories, really heartbreaking stories this morning. Yeah, China, it has been heartbreaking. We spoke to a woman who's missing her niece's wedding, which is going to happen tomorrow. Another man is missing his niece's birth. His sister just had a newborn and he's not going to be able to meet her for the first time. And overall, there's hundreds of people still here at PDX mulling around waiting for a flight. Many spending the night here and frankly, many are exhausted. Early Friday morning, travelers sprawled out across PDX. Many spending the night in the airport. It's been very long. I don't sleep well in, in airport chairs either. So. Yeah. Lines stretched across the hallways as travelers waited to learn whether they'd be booked on a new flight. Yeah, not going out to New York. Will Drews was headed east to visit his sister and newborn niece. Around 2 a.m., American Airlines officially canceled his flight. Said the, uh, the plane had been there so long that the crew had uh, reached their maximum hours they're allowed to work on a shift per day. Luckily, I live here, so I can just go back home and crash. I'm glad I'm not staying in town for the weekend. I have to deal with finding a hotel or something. Others, not so lucky. One couple traveling home to Texas was forced to spend the night in the airport. Uh, no rental cars, no hotels available. Because those companies also ground to a halt due to the tech outage. I have cried my eyes out since morning. I've cried my eyes out. In a statement, PDX says all travelers should contact airlines directly before flights Friday and says they're boosting staff too to help travelers. Still, passenger frustration was palpable. They don't care. I don't think they know what people go through. They don't care. What and I mean, another thing here too is just, China, you remember a few hours ago, these lines had tapered down quite a bit. They're, they're ramping back up still a lot of people either coming back to PDX or still trying to get on their flights here or try to schedule more flights. But hundreds of travelers are now back at PDX just waiting to find another opportunity to either schedule a flight. We also heard from people who said, you know, I'm flying to Minneapolis, but now I've got to go to Los Angeles first before getting to Minnesota or other stories like that. So still a sense of stress, exhaustion and overall frustration with this whole situation. China. I can expect it'll take a while before all of this is ironed out. Thank you, Thomas. All right, we have a quick traffic alert for you. Crews are in the scene of a possible campsite fire that extended to some brush in the area of Southwest NATO under the Markham Bridge. Portland Fire tells us that the flames have been extinguished, but crews are still working to clear the debris with water and foam and are urging drivers to avoid the area. We'll bring you more updates as we receive them. New at noon, fire crews have rescued a person who they say was stuck in a pipe in the ground in northwest Portland. Portland Fire shared these photos from the incident. This happened around 6 a.m. Crews responded to reports of someone calling for help from some sort of hole. Officials say they were able to help get the person out. We don't know the person's injuries, if any. 
Fire crews say they're not exactly sure how the person got down there. All right, time for a look at weather with Daisy Caballero. Daisy. Yeah, thank you so much, China. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. We officially made it to the weekend and it's going to be another beautiful sunny day here in the Rose City. So far, holding 79 degrees out at PDX. And as we're looking at the rest of our current temperatures, uh, other areas are already hitting 80. 80 in Troutdale, 81 over in Tigard already, 86 down in Sherwood. Looking at the rest of our map here, we're looking at 78 degrees over in Sheridan. So Portland's high for today, 89 degrees, 88 for Vancouver and 86 degrees for Longview. And taking a really quick look at our air quality map here. So far, we are seeing good air quality for much of the Willamette Valley and also for parts of Southwest Washington. We do have some moderate pockets, of course, in the areas that you see highlighted in the yellow and uh, one over in Burns for unhealthy air quality. Now, of course, as these wildfires continue to uh, burn for these next few days, our smoke forecast is maybe suggesting that we may be dealing with some hazy conditions for these next few days. But we have a lot more to talk about, including a heat advisory that the National Weather Service has actually issued for Saturday. More details coming up. All right, Daisy, thank you. Now to an update on Multnomah County's plan to send some people caught using illegal drugs to treatment rather than jail. The potential fix is a center where police can take users on Portland's central east side. And some neighbors are less than thrilled about this. Blair Best spoke with people who say less than two months out from opening, they still have a lot of questions. Behind this door, construction is underway on what will soon be Multnomah County's deflection program. Come September, possession of hard drugs like fentanyl will be a crime again, and people will have the option of treatment over jail. Now, if they choose treatment, officers will bring them here to this building off Southeast Sandy Boulevard in Portland's Central East Side. There's still a lot of questions around this program, though, like how many times can someone choose this treatment option over jail, and how long can they stay here? Well, community members were hoping to get answers to some of those questions at a meeting with the county last night. Here's someone who represents the Neighborhood Association. He was at that meeting. We have gotten a commitment that there will be now a limit, whereas previously there was going to be no limit on the number of times that an individual could utilize the deflection program. Now they've committed to a limit, but they don't know what that is. A lot of our residents are concerned that when people are brought in, they will not leave. They will set up camps, you know, right next to the preschool, a couple blocks away and over time migrate to, you know, living on the streets near Buckman Elementary School. There's a lot of concern around, you know, where people will stay once they've been dropped off and what type of trauma they'll be experiencing. Our concern is not that these activities or these people will be brought into this center to receive services. Our concern is that they will not receive services. Um, and that's been echoed by all of our community members. So we wanted to hear from those businesses and we tried. We talked with about a dozen business owners surrounding that deflection center and none of them wanted to go on camera. They either didn't know anything about it or they didn't want to say the wrong thing because they all understand how sensitive this issue is. Yet the general consensus was that they weren't pleased with how the county went about choosing the location, yet they all want the city to change how they respond to the addiction crisis. Now inside this RV, which is parked near the deflection center, is a man who has been using drugs for most of his life. He thinks the deflection program is a great idea. I think uh, that's a lot better than going to jail. <laughs> Man, that's cool. I think you give them some chances. That is really cool, I think. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, everybody's... Some people really, really, really have a problem with drugs. You know what I mean? I mean, they're like, if they don't get them, they totally fall apart and they're just a mess. And then, then they do whatever they can you know, to get it. And that's where the problem comes in. I do just about anything, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm more adhered to like fentanyl right now. I mean, everybody's doing it, you know. So there's just a slice of how this neighborhood is feeling about the deflection center. And as you just heard, opinions are somewhat divided between the businesses and those living on the streets. Now today in an email, County Chair Jessica Vega Peterson told us they've held two meetings with community groups and they're now working on a good neighbor agreement. Again, the center is set to open in September and we'll be following it. In Southeast Portland, Blair Best, KGW News.